Eddie, what's up, man? Glad to have you on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, you bet. I've been following you for probably a couple of years, but I've really been enthralled, I guess is maybe the word with what you put out there lately. I don't know. Um, Trying to think of the right word. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, you know what? It's interesting because I like guys like yourself because you say what I think needs to be said and you say it in a way that it needs to be said. But so many people in this day and age are offended about every little thing. And I like that you just put it out there raw. Yeah. That, uh, just kind of talking about, I kind of, I, I think there was a study. It was a study when the whole Trump Biden first started about how 60 something percent of people were afraid to give their opinion. And you could see why it is. If I, if I put something about a teddy bear on Instagram, somebody or at least a few people are going to have a problem with that teddy bear. Why is the teddy bear brown? It looks a little bit short. I don't like that teddy bear. Is that a female teddy bear? So it's just like there's always something. It's like you can never please everybody. And what's I, I mean, which, you know, we kind of know that, but you really don't see it until you like post, throw it out there. But I'm like, man, there's all this stuff the 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 events, current events that we should be talking about, like racism, the election, uh, certain things that people are afraid to talk about. They need to be talked about because everyone's afraid to talk about. So it never gets talked about. And then we just start building up these opinions and formulating our own mind without getting another second opinion from someone else's side and not really learning. And it's just it's pathetic, to be honest with you. It really is. And it's, it's, it's like a wound or some sort of, you know, cancer or illness that will just fester inside of you. And you really can't see the symptoms of whatever's festering inside. If you just bury it until it's too late. And I feel like that's what's happening in society. (laughs) Right. Like, don't, don't talk about gender. Don't talk about sex. Don't talk about racism. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Um, and it's not like those problems go away just because we're not talking about it. it right. Makes it works. They're, they're still there. They're, they're absolutely still there. Yeah. Is that the reason that you post the way that you do and you bring up these very, well, frankly, they're controversial. I don't really think they're all that controversial, but that's coming from somebody who sees it very much the same way you do. Right. I, I guess my big thing is like we're going away from morals and values in this country. And, and, me, and I don't know if we are or if just media has its little tight little evil grip around certain things and like, hey, we're only going to put this out there and not talk about the other side. Like we'll talk about transgender or getting rid of this or getting rid of that and everyone should be thinking like this now. It's not true. Like it, the, we have values and when it, when it feels wrong, it it's probably wrong. And I mean – you know, for whatever percentage of the population is feels a certain way, you know, there's another huge majority that's like, this isn't right, but they, they keep their mouth shut. And it's, and I, and I say this, and I, I've, I've hesitated a lot to post this one, which it's coming, trust me, is, um, <laughs> as, as, I'm, as I'm a Christian, like, I'm not like, hey, I'm a Christian, but I, I'm a Christian. Like, I, I, you know, I pick up my Bible every day. I, I try to get better. I try to do, actually walk out Jesus's life as best as I possibly can. Do I fall short? constantly but it just it's like anything else right if i pick up a new hobby or sport i fail i fail i learn i learn i get stronger stronger and stronger and um it, it's things are not talked about and I, about our values and it is just it's disgusting it hurts me it's just you know we go back i go back to my parents what they instilled in me and they did a wonderful job and i'm trying to not like i want to pass that down to my children but the school system media uh, especially social media puts that stuff in their, their mind. Like, Oh, twerking school when you're seven years old. No, it's not cool. It's, it's not, it's cool. not you cool. Look like a slut. It's not cool. <laughs> Do you so, think that there's, this is a thing that I've wrestled with on my own. I've wondered ooh. is this trend that I see us going down of this degenerate society that we live in. We're talking about sexualizing children. Like you just talked about, um, drugs, alcohol, pornography, gender, transgender, like all of these things, racism. is another issue that I, I don't actually believe is as bad as the media would hype it up to be. No, it's not. (laughs) So do you think it's some sort of design, like collaborative effort, or do you think it's just the natural progression of times being frankly, very good? You really want to dig deep into this rabbit hole, don't you? I do, man. We got, we got, we got, an, and we got um, an hour to do it, dude. We I'll got tell you what, one thing I f- forgot to mention about that, about the whole Christian thing, is that Christians make up a huge population of this of this country. 
and, right. and they're ve- they're acting very meek and mild because they don't want to stir the pot. They're, mm-hmm. they're afraid to say something like, oh, we're supposed to love everyone, love everyone. Okay, I would say go back to your Bible and go see what Jesus did pretty much every Sunday. He stirred the pot. He was yeah. you heal people on Sundays and when he's not supposed to eating, whatever, whatever, whatever it was back then. Uh, but, but it's all the time. It was all, it was constantly. And you can interpret the Bible as any way you want to, but we are so afraid and, I, and I'm like disgusted by a lot of my, uh, you know, Christian counterparts or whatever. They, they don't, they don't want to stir the pot. They're afraid to speak their mind. And that is called weak. That is just being weak and a coward. And um, so I, I think we're building these things like racism way more than it really is. It, it, it comes down. I'm sure you've seen it. It's I don't judge you by your skin color. It's if you're an asshole or not. That's I mean, right. that that's if you treat people good, I don't care if you're a freaking dinosaur, an alien or a, a ruler on a, on a table. If you treat me well, hey, buddy, we're getting along and I'm going to do the same for you. I'm going to like reciprocate that. Uh, but we don't we don't do that. We we paint these pictures, especially with all the the BLM riots, which is probably the greatest, just their name, Black Lives Matter. They, I mean, well done, well done, but they don't help the black communities. They're, they're are like you talking front- about, are you talking with their name? Are you talking about from like a marketing or position perspective? When you say well done, what do you mean by that? I think from both marketing and warping your mind, great marketing. I mean, it's mm. great marketing. Like, oh yeah, we're talking about Black Lives Matter. It's all right. But if I, if I, if we take that same principles and I put White Lives Matter, oh dude, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm done. Like I'm done. Yeah. And that is, right. that's bullshit. I, I should, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way at all. And they're not, if there was just to be out there, it should be, you know, like I, I we, we have that little time, like all lives matter. Like people are getting upset by people saying all lives matter. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. That is insane. It's weird that to me that we, that way. It, well, it's just strange that we even have to say either. Like, do we really have to say black lives matter? I think, no, the overwhelming majority of people on this planet would agree with the sentiment, not not the organization, the sentiment. And right. I think the overwhelming majority of everybody on this planet would believe that all lives matter. Like, I, I don't that's not even a debate. It's not even open right. for discussion. Everybody, for the most part, again, there's the select few and you've dealt with those people intimately. We all know and believe in the sanctity of human life like that doesn't need to be said. Right. Yeah. But, but they, but the thing is, and, and of course this is what you believe and what proof you have and what you've seen and what you've heard is that it's just a freaking front for the, the democratic party. That's what it was to gain money. And I, and I firmly believe that it was, that's what it was used for. Let's start all this. Let's show this, the, the black public, they just need this. They need this. They need this. And they, and they do need certain things. And so does the white public and so do Hispanics and Asians in, in this country. We all, we all need something. We all have a strong, strong spot. And we all have a weak spot. Uh, but but what's being covered? Black Lives Matter. It's it's all being covered by the media. So everyone that are sitting in their house, like, oh my God, these these poor people are getting just destroyed. And yes, they have slums. They have bad areas. And so does every other race. We've heard of the trailer park. I mean, there's sure. there's no freaking difference. There is no difference. But we're making it worse by um by putting it out there and, and putting all this and like people getting on their knees and kissing people like, come on, dude, don't ever apologize for who, how God created you, please. It's just, well, it's I like that you're talking about from that Christianity standpoint. Cause I see that too, is like, we're supposed to be friendly and loving and non-judgmental. That's the one I hear. Right. That's talking. a hard don't, one. Don't judge people. <laughs> and it's true. We don't want to judge people, but that doesn't mean that we as individuals can't, whether you're a Christian or some other denomination or don't believe in God at all, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, stand by your convictions like absolutely right you, you shouldn't stand sacrifice up for you your believe. principles right you yeah. gotta stand up what you're for belief and i don't and people will take that out of context well i believe in uh you know white power or i believe in you know just black power okay that's so that's wrong all right you gotta it has to be righteous what you're standing for like you know you should know you're, you're every human's made the same do we do some have uh issues mentally of course they do but you should be standing up for what's right. And it's like, it's equality. If, if we're really looking for equality, start taking out names, start taking them out and treat everyone equal. We should have no scholarships for this race or scholarships for this race, or we can only get in this certain percentage into this school like that. Yes. Like the organizations of those places are, that's what that is. I mean, I, I heard even when I did a lot of research when all this was going on, I'm like, okay, what's really going on here? 
And I, and I learned that like in certain schools, like Asians are very, very smart, like very smart. Um, right. And they were getting into a particular Ivy League, Ivy League school and they had to like stop them because they didn't want too many Asians in there. Okay, right. so that that would be racism in my in my opinion. I think, or it's, that's not okay. It's not even an opinion. That's objective. Yeah, yeah that's bullcrap. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it shouldn't matter. It's like, who's the best person for the job? Well, you know what? We really need a black guy in here and two females. Okay, well, that's that's where we start. Like, it should be the best person for the job. And I understand, like, certain place we we need different demographics, and I, I understand that, and those should be met. Like, the military is one of them. Like, we need to get you know, um, a Pakistani because we might be going over there and we need someone to blend in. Like I get certain things, certain jobs, understandably, but we're, we're way off the mark in my opinion on certain jobs. Yeah. But when you talk about that in the military, let's take, for example, an interpreter that happens to be attached to a unit and he happens to be Pakistan or Iraqi. Okay. Yes. I guess that's his ethnicity or his, his country or his race, but it's also a qualification in that in that Absolutely. specific situation. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, think, you still got to do A, happens, B, and C. Right. Well, I think what happens when we when we take race or sex as a determinant of job qualification, inevitably we're going to get inferior results. And let me be very clear about this because somebody's going to misconstrue that. I'm not saying other races are inferior. I'm not saying women are inferior to men or vice versa. I'm saying that if you're only judging it based on characteristics that actually don't qualify you for the position, mm-hmm. the, the effectiveness of the team organization or unit will always be diminished, always be diminished. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah, that drives me crazy. I hear a quick little story for you, which I mean, there, like, obviously I was in the military for 20 years and you, and you, you know, there's the, Oh, you're black. Oh, you're white. You're just this. You're just that. Like just jokingly, messing right. around right um so with we, friends went that to, you can have those yeah, conversations exactly with. it's not it's gonna different. be like oh you're 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 that i'm the, no way i'm gonna stay away no it's not like that and you know there's a saying that we all bleed green and all that good stuff um we went to i got invited to go to the nfl draft like up to new york when actually people could actually go outside and not be scared of invisible things <laughs> um went up there and we got to go on stage there was three seals that were invited through so three of us were going to go up there one was an officer and there was myself, and then there was another guy who was an enlisted dude, and he, he was a black man. Uh, nice guy. No, I knew him for uh, – saw him on deployment a couple of years ago, and, you know, we, we went out, you know, had dinner the night before. Just everything's normal. And I, I don't really – I didn't really care because one of us got to ch- go up there and actually announce the pick of who mm-hmm. it was. So we got to do the NFL uh, headquarters, which is super cool to go see until they got a political. I don't watch them anymore, but – they, um, I, we were talking about it, like, Hey, who's going to go do it. And I was like, I just got, I have to say one thing. If it's the Bengals, can I please, please say, cause I was a huge Bengals fan. Uh, yes, yeah. they're actually You're from there. Ohio, right? And, yes. I'm from Cincinnati. Right. Yeah. So everyone and, the, and the, my buddy was like, yeah, totally. Absolutely. He's like, if I, if it's the bears, can I get the bears? I'm like, dude, I wouldn't want to announce the bears if I had to, like, it's all <laughs> yeah. you. I'm not so even showing we, up. <laughs> we had this agreement. Right. And I, I, made friends with the vice president uh, of NFL ops at the time, really good dude uh, who was at time. Marvin Lewis was the head coach for Cincinnati Bengals. They were best friends. I didn't know this. They went golfing all the time. He's like, Hey, I got you. I think it was like the 83rd or 86th pick. He's like, what's the Bengals. I was like, yes. yes. So like being on stage to announce them and I was going to do it. My buddy's like, yeah, you got it. And the officer found out about this and he came up and he goes, Hey, um, we're going to need, you know, so-and-so to announce. And I was like, well, we, we were just talked about, it. it's not a big deal, but we like that. We already figured it out. Like not knowing what was going on. And he goes, well, we kind of want a, a black person to represent the community. And I was like, so many things went through my mind. One of them was taking my fist to this dude's face. Um, and I was like, Roger that. Got it. Got it. Like I was, I didn't want to make a scene. Like it was literally, we we're about to walk sure. out on stage. So right. He got it. He get like the dude took the the, the envelope to to uh, to say it, and he kind of looked at me, and I kind of looked at him. I'm not, and I was just like, "Do you see this shit? Do you see that this is ridiculous? Like it's insane." So we went on it, but like, there you go, right there, man. It's everywhere. Like, so I mean, you yeah. can take that what it was. It's not a big deal, 
but it is a big deal because it, it's it translates freaking, to other areas of life yeah, too. 100 percent. i'm like are you freaking kidding me and it's you like, know what's in interesting our, in our, though about that is that if you take in that situation mm-hmm. let's say this this friend of yours who happened to be a black man how sh- I, I don't know maybe he wasn't but how shitty would he feel if the reason that he got selected to do something was simply because he's black or if you're a woman and and you you have a job opportunity and you know the reason that you got picked was because you're a woman and not yeah, because I, of your skill set. How shitty would you feel? Or at least how shitty should you feel, I would think. I, I would think pretty shitty, but I don't think – I think some people believe they're entitled to it. I mean, mm. I think there's that uh, – it comes down to the individual, you know. Some are like, man, mm. this isn't right. And some probably turn – and there's probably tons of them that turn down jobs because of that very reason. We just don't hear about it. We hear about the ones yeah, where – we hear about the ones, oh, they didn't hire them because because they were a girl or whatever it was. It's like, dude, it is so one-sided. My my um my woman went out with her friends last Thursday to a restaurant and it's it's uh here in Dallas. And she's and I was like, Oh wow, that's that's cool. And she's like, It's just girls' night. And I was like, Oh, that'd be fun. What are you guys doing? And she's like, Oh, we're just going to a restaurant, but it's all female. It's like it's only females are allowed to go in there. And I was thinking, I was like, that's interesting. I was like, if I opened a restaurant but men only were allowed to come in there. Dude, I would have picket signs wrapped around my building, people throwing Molkoff cocktails. Like it would be insane, but it's okay if the females do it, but not, but it's true. It is very true. It'd be sexist. It'd be, it'd be anything, everything, but it's what it's meant to be. It's just like, no, just guys need a place to go freaking shoot the shit and hang out and relax. But no, it's, oh, you're anti-woman. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Well, when I hear that, I'm like, it. it is, it is okay for women to have a place where only that is okay. I Absolutely. think that's a great thing. And Absolutely. it also is okay that there's a place where men go and it's just the guys. And then we go do our things and, and we do whatever it is we we guys do. And then we come back and everything's good. You know, it's okay for both. Yeah, I think a lot exactly. of people feel like excluded or left out. Um you know, it's funny. I was at uh, Sorenex Winter Strong uh, this past weekend, mm-hmm. and we had this event. They were it was a team to, uh, team event, and they had like ten team captains, and then they just picked you know one two three, and they picked teams until there's always the last guy. You remember that in school? Oh yeah, like, yeah. You you never wanted to be the last guy, <laughs> and and there was the last guy, and I was looking at, I was just watching him, and I'm like, man, he probably feels really crappy right now, and. That is how we grew up where like, okay, so you don't want to feel crappy. Don't get picked last next time. Like be better. Right. But, but now, and I'm using this as just an example, but now it's like, oh, well, you know, we don't want anybody to feel bad or to feel left out. I'm like, yeah, neither do I. That's why they need to get better. But now we bubble wrap them and we coddle them and we say, hey, no, we're not going to pick team. No, we can't pick teams because then somebody will feel bad. I actually think that there's a situation in life, many situations in life we're feeling bad is the right emotion. Like if you underperform, Absolutely. you should feel bad about that. But society doesn't want That's to your that. drive, your goals. How do I get better? Come in. And now we're losing right. that. Now we're expecting everything to be handed to us or, or right. certain generational people are expecting it to be handed to them. Do you think it's, it's generational? Us in the ass. I, I think, I think there's, I mean, look, we talk about we talk about millennials and Gen X or we talk about all that, but then also, you know, you think about boomers, like they're very, they feel very entitled as well. Like, is it generational or is it just, I, I, I personally think it is just, I, I know when going out, I, and maybe it's not, maybe it's just who you hang out with or you are who you hang out with. Um, but yeah, I see a lot of like kids, my, or my kids and their friends, expect certain things just the way they talk and and i've and i've been here i've done that where i've, I've been like oh yeah sure here you go you don't know why i said yes it's because i don't want to hear them freaking talk or whine anymore where <laughs> i should be like excuse me excuse me what yeah. how'd you ask uh why do you get this you don't get this because you didn't do x y and z so i think it kind of comes down to the parenting and i think our parents my at least for my parents they they didn't give me what i wanted i mean i had to work i remember going to the store all the time Oh, I want that. No, I want this. No. Like, you know, you ask me again, you're losing this, all that mm-hmm. stuff. But <clears throat> I think a lot of times we don't want people to be screaming or throwing a fit in the thing. So we just kind of give them what they want. I've been guilty or, or, or it's as simple sure. as, Hey, put this iPad in your lap and freaking get zoned in here. So you'll shut up. 
So, I, yeah, in a sense, because you know those kids probably be coming in, can I please have my iPad? Because remember, the la- they're, they're not saying this, but in their mind, they're like, remember the last time I threw a fit and took the milk carton and chucked it out of the freaking cart? Right. So I, I think it's a little bit of both. I, th- I really do, dude. I mean, look at look at the temper tantrums that we're, we see across the country, and I'm sure it's been there every every time, but it's, I, I don't, it's like we're in the twilight zone, man. It, it is yeah, insane. It's, it's pretty These, wild. I, I don't want to work for my stuff because the government's going to pay me this. Why would I work? I mean, it's really a good question. Though. Why would you? <laughs> so, but there's it's just like a valid. drive. It's valid. <laughs> it's like a drive. And it kind of goes back to your school system. What are we teaching our children about drive, honor, loyalty, courage, integrity, get out there and being motivated and being that country that the better you do, the better off you are. But we're, we're trying to suck certain people are trying to suck that away. It's like, hey, we're all on the even, we're all on the even playing field. Like, dude, that's what? Where's the competition? Mm-hmm. Where is the competition? It's it's like gone. Like, so if you find, like for my kids, if they're on a um we do a bunch of different sports, but if they get like a medal and everyone's getting the medal, like oh, they'll be like, Oh, I got a medal. Like, yeah, but you, you know, you, you lost it. They would just they give that to everyone. I'll literally tell them that. And like, hey, it's it's okay. You can get better ones and all that. It's like by working and doing well, working together for yourself, and your team, and you get you know better rewards. So yeah. it just, I think a lot of people are like, oh, that's great. Look at you, you got a medal. Like, rock on. Okay, let's not talk about this anymore. Let's move on. Instead of like <laughs> right. sitting down for like thirty seconds explaining it that that's participation medals or whatever you want to call it, they don't go well, and it's not going to be good in life. It just adds up. It just adds up. It just adds up. It just adds up. You know, it's, you bring up a really good point that I think we should address a little deeper because when, when you're trying to spare somebody their feelings or make them feel special, I think more often than not, what people are actually doing is sparing their own feelings. Cause like if my children don't succeed, like, I don't want to feel bad. Right. And so it's not actually, it's actually very selfish because if it was selfless, I would have a very uncomfortable conversation with my sons or my daughter and say, look, you didn't perform as well as you could. And here's what you need to do. That's awkward and uncomfortable as a parent. So rather than actually having that real conversation and being a real parent, we just put our arm around them and say, you did a good job because we don't want to have the discomfort. It has nothing to do with our children at all. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some uh, truth in that one. And I, and I guess that kind of comes down to us putting on the big boy pants and there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. You just did it without being a jerk or making it sure. feel like crap, which is obviously tactful is put your arm around like, Hey, you did a really awesome job, but I think that we have some goals and I'm going to work with you and we're going to do this, this, and this, and we're going to destroy it next year or next time we do whatever. I mean, there's a way to do it. I just don't think, I think just, from what I see from friends and uh, just around is, or just in the store as I'm shopping is um, we just don't put the effort in it. I just don't think we put the effort. And I don't know if we just don't have the right tools for it because in general, things are just kind of given to certain people or you get it because you're this, I I don't know, but yeah, we're lazy. We're freaking lazy. It's easy easy to be lazy. And you know, frankly, there's no consequence to being lazy. Like, if you don't make your mortgage payment, then, you know, you, you're, these laws are in place to make sure you're, uh, there's extended, you know, mortgage payment relief. If you don't, right. uh, if you get, if you get laid off or you lose your job or you get fired, oh, well here you can have uh, unemployment benefits. Exactly. It, if, if you have, you know, a rough time, the government will come in to swoop it up and save you. So there's actually no consequence to being lazy. If there were, I think we'd see fewer lazy people because they'd be either getting their asses kicked or they, they'd run the risk of losing their lives because they'd be out on the street and freezing and everything else. So we, we're, affor- we're afforded the opportunity to be lazy and we actually have to put ourselves into difficult situations voluntarily because nobody else is going to do it for us. So, so where, where is that line or where does that happen where, where, where there's, the, there's, you know, there's a two type of people there? Uh, one's okay with being lazy and just kind of chilling for a while and then there's the person like i would assume us that are like oh my gosh let's like let's let's act we got to do something like i'm resumes are going out i'm calling friends i'm calling whatever i can anything even if it's a temporary job what do i do because i don't want to rely on the government 
which is just just even saying relying on the government is just like horrific to me. It scares me. That'd be a scary movie. It's, it's actually <laughs> embarrassing. Like if I if I was in that situation, I would be embarrassed. And look, I know people are in crappy situations and things come up, but you should be you shouldn't want to be on government assistance. You should be embarrassed no. by that. So no, you can you get out of that situation and stand on your own two feet. And I get that there's certain things that pop up where you kind of, that's the only option. I get it, but you should be working, being extremely proactive to get off that as soon as possible and making things happen on your own. That's the way, I mean, that's what this country is about. And people, I don't know if they don't understand that or they don't get it. They weren't taught that. I mean, you just hear the things that are being sucked out of the public school system and it's disgusting. And some things that are just ridiculously being added to it. Um, so yeah. Is what do you, that what what do, you is? do with your kids? Do you, do you homeschool your kids or are they in the public school system or what? They're what in the pub, what, I have one of my, my oldest daughter, she's in private school right now, Okay. but it's, it's virtual. So that's probably not happening next year. If she can do virtual, cause she'll be a senior. Uh, I think my son, I'm going to homeschool, start homeschooling next year. I'm kind of debating on what to do. We'll see how much time that's going to take uh, because it's a lot. Like I don't, I don't want someone else bringing in. I'd want to do it myself. And I just want to make sure I get and find a good program. So we've been looking for programs uh, to do that because I, because I have a full-time job too. And, um, but if it comes to certain things and we also live in Texas at a certain good old boy area where they're not pushing. <laughs> right please understand and love transgenders or, or some kind of weird program. So we don't really have that. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I really, after all this crap going on, like I heard they're taking out this and this and this, uh, I don't know, but it's definitely, it's on the plate to pull the trigger for homeschool. So, but then it's like, okay, am I, am I messing up my kids socially? Because I mean, he goes to jujitsu, he's in extracurricular activities. So where, what, what is it? Cause I've, I was always at a public school Never had a problem yeah. with it. So the Pledge of Allegiance every day. Uh, America was a, a big deal. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Kind of like been talking you know to a lot funny. of people. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when I was a kid, the homeschool kids were the weirdos, right? Like, that's what I right. remember. I was like, "There's the, those Same are the thing. weird kids. But um, we actually homeschool our children. And they're, it's been awesome. We've done it for the past two years now. And no kidding. It, yeah. And it's been incredible. And we look, we look for actively look for opportunities to socialize our children with their peers. Just right. the other day, we had some friends over and they had kids, my kids his age, and they get plenty of social interaction. In fact, I think they're more socially adjusted for real life than just dinking around on the schoolyard, you know, with, with other kids who don't know anything about life and don't have, right. you know, good folks at home. So it's if you're looking for a good program, blind. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like people will say, well, I want them to be adjusted to, to kids. And I'm like, well, I, I would rather have my kids learn Turn how to dog. interact with adults, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there's value to being with your peers. I'm of not course saying that, is. but there's, there's a great program called, um, the good and the beautiful. That's the homeschool program that we use. And I, uh, I know, yeah, write it down. It's been a good program. Um, and then of course we interact and do the social stuff, uh, just on our own. And then there's things that we do that aren't necessarily included in the curriculum, like jujitsu or firearms I, training, the things that I know you're probably doing as it is in, injected in there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is your whole, that's good. Whole okay. So that, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. And if you have any, any questions, let me know. I know a lot of people are doing that and it's becoming more viable as an option. Gotcha. I love it. Is your, uh, your whole unafraid movement, just, just to jump back to an earlier conversation that we we're having, is that based on when you say unafraid, are you saying unafraid of speaking up? Like we were talking about earlier, are you saying developing the skills so that you aren't a scared, timid person? What, what do you mean when you, with that movement? The, the unafraid happened. I was, are you familiar with the band Skillet? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. So they're, they're a Christian group, but they're hard rock. They're actually, check them out. They're really good. Okay. And there's a, um, there was a verse. I was just driving along, you know, sometimes you just hear something. It's like, Whoa, that was, that was good. And, it, and, and the verse was, I am unafraid. Obviously it sounded way better when they did it, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and it just got, music is better. Yes. Yeah, so that, that word just like unafraid. And then I just kind of went down the rabbit hole and I'm like unafraid. Like that is a problem of so many people 
they're afraid of this. And it's not just speaking out. It's not just speaking the truth. It's like standing up for your faith, standing up for your kids, standing up for your family, trying new things, trying to go into, you know, putting in that resume to a job that you don't think you're going to get, but you're not afraid to do it because the worst the worst is going to happen is they're going to say no, or they could say yes. And it, your life changes. Uh, so it's just that basic. I mean, I got it, it tattooed on my arm. Like it's, it just, it's, it's, it floats around my brain all the time. So I started unafraid just off of my, off, off my website, just to sell some gear it just kind of to motivate people. And then when like the whole COVID thing hit, you, you just see the fear in everyone's eyes, like a fear of everything, which for a few weeks there, it was a little scary because we had no clue sure, what was we happening. We didn't know what was going on. Like, we're going to burst into bubbles and boils and freaking blow up, you know, spontaneously. <laughs> right. what, like, what was happening? No one knew what was happening. And then I, I would say the smarter group would figure it out after a few weeks. Okay, what's going on? Like, oh, all of a sudden the flu's gone. You know, we just had this COVID. I broke my arm. It's COVID. So it, it's like... <laughs> You kind of see it for what it is, but people are scared shitless. They don't, they don't, they don't understand. Like, hey guys, we have an immune system. Now that's not saying it takes care of everything, but you have to build it and make it stronger. Do the right thing. Work out. Supplement if you need to. Um, eat right. Like all, all these things, people aren't doing because all you hear if we're on the COVID thing. Sorry about this. But it's like, hey, wash your hands, safe distance, and wear a mask. That's all right. you hear. You're not going to hear. What about don't hey, eat at McDonald's yeah, and go work don't out eat every like day? Crap places, work out and freaking take supplementation if you need it to boost your immune system during this time. What? What? what have you ever heard that on a commercial or a TV? No, I haven't heard not. it ever. I heard from friends that know what the hell they're talking about, not the media. It's like healthy where friends, is that? right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, and if they do get sick, it's like boom, it's gone. Um, right. And not to say that it's not real. People do suffer. Absolutely. We know this, but I mean, they, they suffer from the flu, bronchitis, pneumonia, cancer. We can go on down, uh, you know, eating a bunch of obesity, heart disease, diabetes, all that stuff. So yeah, just the unafraid thing. And it's just kind of stuck with me. It's just something I started pushing. And then I started a membership plan, which I've been slacking on to just kind of set it up because I'm not ready to push it. And the whole thing was getting ready for the books that, that are coming out. Um, Cause we're going to do one on mindset. We have one coming. It's kind of like my memoir. I think that'll be the first one coming out. And then we just started another one on, on death. <laughs> so we're getting a bunch of people that have in certain jobs and certain organizations have taken out people and kind of, and kind of talk about it. Like, Hey, what were you feeling? How did it feel? How do you feel now? Mm. And like, what was going through your mind? What was going through your mind after? Like, do you have any emotions? Like all those things from these different characters. And then, you know, we're, uh, we're talking, we've been talking now for a mindset book. So uh, books going to be coming here, hopefully starting this summer. And then, uh, but that, but we started the membership plan called the den and that's where people can go in there and they can be like, Hey guys, I need motivation for whatever it is. And people can kind of feed into it. I have not, I think I've done one post on it. Really don't push on it. There's like not a lot of members on there at all. People really don't post anything, but I think it will once the books get going for people, I guess, kind of a, I wouldn't say like, I hate saying the safe place thing. I hate saying it. But uh, people to go in there and be like, because a lot of people don't want to put their stuff out on social media. Like right. we talk There's got to be a different term because it's not, you're not talking, when you say that, you're not talking about like safe spaces. Where yeah, like any, non-judgmental you know. space. Like we, right. like, or just like get motivation for, because we've all yeah, been there. There's got to be a better term. Yes. Yeah, we don't want the, the sign with the, the hug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so we, had the, we started the den a while back and it's been we just really haven't been pushed we're just kind of letting things go and i think the book will push it up there just so people can post their workouts good readings that people can put up like hey this book is awesome it's about this i would totally check it out um and hey guys i need help dropping 30 pounds by this date any suggestions and mm. you can there's a place to put meals up smoothies um uh, just so like faith-based stuff we have all these different sections that you can go into so if you're somebody's in there like, Hey, I just need faith-based stuff. They just go into the faith-based and they can just get filled. So, right. um, we'll see what happens, especially when you get crucified on media, uh, for posting anything. But I mean, I don't, I personally yeah. don't mind. I don't care. I understand that's there. I actually laugh at it. Like my haters motivate me. So thank you haters. I, I tell it's them all the time, Hey guys, what's going on? I love you haters. <laughs> <laughs> and they but probably a lot of people that. are afraid to talk about it, dude, because they're afraid to get like destroyed. Yeah, that's, that's, it's, it sucks. 
do you think we start bringing solutions to the table by talking about it, by having conversations like this, by putting it out there? I, I kind of tend to believe that's the case because I've been talking with guys like you and successful men for six years now. And I feel like the solution is let's talk about the things that nobody else is talking about. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like address the elephant in the room, right? We got to talk about this mm -hmm. or not. And people are afraid because they're afraid to speak their opinion because they're afraid to get, because people know not, they don't, they don't listen. They listen to respond. They don't listen to understand. Like if you and I have a dis disagreement on, we'll just say race. Okay. Cause it's, it's out there and you believe a, and I believe B. I should be, we should both be at the position as adults to hear your side and not be thinking, oh, I can't wait to tell him this. I can't wait to tell him this. Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel like, hey, what, response. Right. What is this? What does he, what does he have to say? What does he have to say? Because I'm going to learn something. Like I will learn something from you. And if you keep an open mind, you're going to learn something from me. Like it's not, I have the solution. You are wrong. It's it's never like that. It's like, hey, I got that compromise. It doesn't mean I'm I'm here to change your beliefs, but just you know, see where I'm coming from. And like, do, do you get this? Because I mean, I've heard tons of people talk about race, sexuality, and, and I, and I, and I get it. I get it. There was somebody, I just posted something, uh, I think it was like last week or the week before about Washington state was going to start putting in uh, classes for children, kindergartners to yes. talk about LGBTQ, RF, one, two, three, talk about those guys um, to kindergarten. Right. I have a problem with that. And I, I don't live in Washington, but that's, you know, things can start and they can just kind of spread. And, and I'm not about that. So I, I put something up and, and this, this dude puts, well, this transgender man, sorry, he's a woman. Or, a woman who thinks right, he's a man. Right. right. Got it. Uh, posted something on there and he goes, Eddie, I am a, I am a freaking Christian. I, I am very faith based. And I do agree with you that this should not be pushed on young generation where they, because they're so young. I could, I tell a kid, I can tell them like, you're a dog. I could tell them for, until they're blue in the face, right. they're a dog. They're going to start believing they're a dog. They're going right. to start believing they're a dog. Like they're so young. Uh, they're but impressionable. They go, they're young. Exactly. They're, you like, can it's, mold dude, them. It's, it's, I see a freaking commercial for a burger. Guess what? I want a burger. Like of it's, course. it's marketing, of man. Course. <laughs> and, um, but he goes or she goes that's you know what what i choose and what i decide is between myself and god not and i was like and i couldn't i could only agree i mean but i i don't i don't agree with that whole thing i think it's a, a serious mental issue or sickness or whatever i'm not a doctor uh but, I, but god doesn't mess up he doesn't he does not mess up so but she but she was right or he was right that 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 is between them and God. It is because it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with him. Just like I have issues and you do as well. And every, all the audience does of course. They have issues. That is some, some of those things are between you and God and no one else. And they're they, like, you just said, we should not be judging people. Uh, but it doesn't mean I don't want you to shove your beliefs or whatever you think down my, my throat or my children's throat at all. Like that'll be my decision as a parent. And then when they're 18, you're out on their own, that'll be their decision to spread their wings and fly away. So it, it was cool, like to hear that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I still don't believe it's right at all whatsoever. I don't, but I, but I get it. Just like I've had seasons in my life where I've spent every day at a bar drinking. That's not right. I shouldn't do that. That's not right. And uh, there's probably pe and people at the time saying, "Eddie, you can't be doing that." Like, don't tell me my business. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like those course, low yeah. parts of life. Like, right? You don't want to hear the truth. Saying, yeah, exactly. It's like, I, I get it. Like I've had those things where like, just that's between me and I need to figure my crap out. Your, your, your words aren't gonna, you know, they're not necessarily going to help me. It might just anger me more. So I, I get it. Like I get it. So, you know, it what's was, interesting it was just about nice. this. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the point right there. So this individual who reached out to you and, and shared this, they shared it from a mature thought process, right? hundred percent. And they actually unlocked a potential conversation. I'll give you another example that I had just the other day. Um, I said something about, I, I just don't think systematic racism exists. I think there's been, there's been isolated events. Uh, I, I believe there's also been systematic racism in the past that we have rooted out over the past 250 years. And I had a gentleman reach out. I said this on the podcast. I had a gentleman reach out and he's like, actually systematic racism exists. And I'm like, okay, well, give me an example. Like, don't just tell me it's everywhere. Give me a, right. a, a specific example 
of where systematic racism exists. And I, I was like, okay, I got him, you know, that, cause that's what we do. Right. Just like you were talking about earlier. <laughs> so he sends me this article and I'm like, oh shit. Like that's actually a point that I didn't know about. And he was talking about, um, and I have to look into it more cause I just saw it actually this morning, he was talking about, uh, this article that had showed, uh, different sentencing for different drug use and things like that, that affect the African-American community greater than, than they do with white people. I have to look into it more, but when he sent it over, I was like, Oh, and I, I was going to try to get him, but he didn't come across that way. He's like here, you know, and he was very respectful mm -hmm. and I still need to explore that, but at least it opened my mind to the possibility because he wasn't being a complete dick. Right. And I tried, I, at first I was, I'll be honest at first I was, but then he came back and he was sharing these things maturely <laughs> and it opened up my response as a more re mature response than right. maybe in 99 other situations. It wouldn't have gone that way. So I think there's a, a, a responsibility that we have to be mature level-headed people. Part of the problem is social media awards you being an asshole, not being a mature individual. Right. Right, which is ridiculous. And it's, it's always, it goes back to, and I, I know you've heard this, is like, we're always a student. Always a student can learn more things from, I mean, two minds are better than one. I mean, my kids teach me stuff all the time. Like, hey, dad, you're being a jerk. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I mean, we just, we need to take other people's opinion and, um, and understand. It doesn't mean that they're going to change your opinion. We, we all grew up in different ways, different environments, have different wounds, you know, you've been injured by this, uh, you know, physically or emotionally, and I've got different ones, or which is going to form you to think this certain way. So I get it. Somebody that's from, you know, a, a great neighborhood growing up is going to think differently than someone that's from like the slums or somewhere not. They're going to they're going to feel differently or been surrounded by gangs versus, hey, I was with uh, I was on the golf team and we always were at the country club. Yeah, we're going to have different views. We're going to have different views. Doesn't make mine wrong and yours right. It doesn't do that. But just like, hey, let's see this, and we meet in the middle and rock on. We now we just made a, a friend, and now we have more assets, and things are better. Right. Well, and what I what I also see is I see people trying to compete to who has it worse. Like, oh well, you know your situation, but my situation was this, and it was like ten times worse. And so we're trying to one up ourselves on the victimhood. Uh, yeah. Instead of saying, the victim oh, game. yeah, <laughs> man. You know what? I've been through some crappy stuff. Sounds like you have too, different stuff. But I'm wondering if the way that you overcame, you know, drinking and some of the things that I actually do want to talk with you about, I wonder if that could help me in my situation rather than just trying to compete to outdo you with whose life was crappier when they were growing up. Right. Why, why are we talking about that? You know what I mean? Like, why? why? No, seriously, man. I, I'm, I'm more of a victim here. That's a thing. That's 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 a, that's popular now. It Who is. can be the victim? Yep. If if you're if you're not if you're straight, let me make sure I say this right. <laughs> if you're straight and not a person of color and whatever it is, and you have nothing Christian, you, you, a Christian, right? And you you can't blame anything on something. You can't claim victim. I mean, we we could. We we just don't. Of um, I'm sure some do, but but then some you're do. you're kind of, you're kind of, you're kind of behind the game. Like man, what do I? What can I complain about? I have nothing to complain about according to society standards. It's ridiculous. Right. You're human. I'm human. Doesn't matter what you look like. It does not matter what you look like. It's how you carry yourself, how you act, and how you treat others. That's it. That's it. No one. No one's gonna give a crap. I mean, like, hey, when we're sitting down and hanging out, we can talk about our childhood. And man, this that was really screwed up. Yeah, yeah, it's something similar. And you know, we just talk about it, and then we find a bonding moment. And things are better, but no, we don't like to do that. You guys have no clue. Like you have no clue how hard it was. Okay. What a what great way to start off a conversation. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and you're, and your you intro? Know what? you're right. Like I don't have any clue and I'm actually pretty glad that that's the case. <laughs> like, I'm, right. like, I don't want to, I don't want to be a victim. I'm glad that my mom did an amazing job raising us. I'm glad that money was never an issue. I'm, I'm glad for all of those things. And now because I was blessed with those opportunities, I feel like I have a moral obligation and responsibility to, at a minimum, share what I know so that people who didn't have it as good as I did can maybe utilize some of that information and improve them themselves in their own lives. Right. And what you just said, your mom did a great job raising your, and all that good stuff. 
if you were had that victim mentality of like, man, my life was so hard, wouldn't you as a human being do everything you could to ensure your children don't, don't have it? One would be start, stop, stop talking like a victim. Like I'm going to get out there. Yeah. I'm destroyed. And there's tons of movies that are on that very thing where people are like enough of this. I don't want to live like this. And they do great things and, and, and change the world. Right. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you not change your ways and to ensure your children don't have this, this victim mentality. People love it. They live in it. They feel sorry for me. I want this. I want that. That's bull crap. You should be cut off. Yeah. And you learn your lesson. I know. But so here's one of the thoughts I've been having lately. And I hear what you're saying. And I used to say like the exact same verbiage and, and, and felt the same way. And I've kind of felt like lately I've been open to the idea that because these people who are in these positions that never had an influence, like maybe you or I did that it's, it's definitely harder if you're not around people. Like, it's easy for me to say, well, like just be better. Cause everybody I grew up with from my mom to my coaches, to men I met in the military, to mentors, everybody has talked to me that way, right. everybody. So it's easier for me to say, well, yeah, just be better because that's what everybody used to say to me and it works. But it's hard when you don't have these, when you have people who don't have the same types of influences. And again, that's why I go back to like, we have an obligation responsibility to be an influential figure in people's lives because they may not have been exposed to this information in any other capacity, in any other way. 100%. I guess, I guess where's that, where's that line of like, okay, you go find it. You being proactive and going to find it. Totally. Like I'm going to go buy a motivational book. I'm going to go do this. I was, I was watching Thursday night old Strike Force. You know, like UFC, but kind of a little bit right. one under. And it was a rerun of 2010. And I had no clue about this. Um, Herschel Walker. You've heard of Herschel Walker? Yeah, of course. He he fought. It was his debut fight. Really? I had no clue. He was 47 yeah, I didn't know years that. old. So Herschel Walker, I don't know his whole story. I know a little, the dude's a badass. He, he, he we know his accolades as an NFL player. Sure. U.S. Olympics, Bob said he taught himself to read and write. And now he's doing a freaking fight uh, at 47 years old. Why? Because he wanted to prove something to himself. Like if you have to teach yourself to read and write, chances are you probably didn't have someone to influence you. Definitely. You, you would think he had to like find that drive. I would, I'm sure he has a, a biography or something that, which I would love to read because he's a, an amazing individual. It sounds like, um, but so what makes it different for him than everyone else is, is that drive. Was there a life event that changed him? Like what, or do you just say like, I don't want to live like this. Cause he, cause he was poor from what I understand. Uh, but, but then he does all this stuff. He's 47 wants to do an MMA fight. It's, it's crazy. It, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, mind-blowing it's it's inspiring um and, well, I, and I, think, I think he's do, doing stuff to where he's reaching out to people and like hey I, I, I he's not he's he's the type of dude that gives back so <clears throat> yeah I, you bring up a good point and i and i do believe there's a line i think where people get hung up is you have these individuals who paint themselves as a victim and actually may have been victimized at some point in some capacity and then right. they adopt this mindset that it's not possible that getting out of this position is not possible, that improving my life is not possible, that getting in shape or getting a job or buying my ha buying a house or buying a car or stopping drug abuse or alcohol abuse, it's just not possible. But then you take a guy like, it sounds like Herschel Walker, I think of David Goggins is another one, who, who think to themselves, oh, you know what? Maybe it is possible. It's just going to be a different kind of hard for me than it is for somebody like you or me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a million dollar question right there. It's like what I guess it's separates, hope, right? Yeah, it, 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 what is it? I mean, what is it? Is uh, I would like to, I would love to know and sit down with these guys we're mentioning and be like, hey, was it? Was there a moment that made you change, or is it just kind of like your own thought process, seeing how your life was? I'm like, hey, this is this is not what I want. Is it something that took time? I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, because. I, I've been very fortunate. I've never really had to suck it up, so to say, like to, you know, growing up and scrounge for food from the table. It's not like I was given everything at all, but um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't well, know, but I know you? that I mean, those- you've been You've been open and vocal in the past about overcoming uh, substance abuse and being in despair. I mean, I know you've gone through your military service and experienced tremendous loss and hardship and turned to some vices that you have said aren't, aren't good for you. W- right. What, what turned it around for you? What got you back on track? Uh, number one was definitely, definitely finding my faith. I'll tell like, yeah, I, that's it. That was my number one right there. And obviously being proactive, picking up certain books, listen to certain podcasts, listen to freaking or audio books, um, getting into proactive, like good things like sports, uh, stuff like that. If who I hang out with, that's a big one. I mean, Definitely. that is a huge one. If you're hanging out with a bunch of drug dealers, chances are, you're going to be selling drugs. You're hanging out with the chess team. Guess what? You're probably going to be playing chess. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Uh, but for me, it was definitely my faith in Christ and just, I guess, accepting certain things that have happened in my military career and sort of asking why, 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 why this, not me, or you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And I, and I, I mean, it, it wasn't an overnight thing. I'll tell you that, but I still struggle once in a while, but I know I have my accountability. I have my go-to when, you know, I'm feeling low or whatever it is. And I, I just go straight to, I mean, I go, I go straight to God and ever and, and all of it. And what's so funny is me even saying these words as I was the dude that if someone said what I just said, I'd be like, wow, what a loser. Like, really? that was me. That was me. I was like, dude, you, that is it's fake. It's not real. There's no way. Um, and then I seeked him because I didn't know what else to do. I was tired of the bottle and those little things that come in those little orange jars where you have to push down and twist off and take one and pop it. Um, I was, I was over it. So that was it for me. Uh, and like, and it wasn't overnight, like, Oh, if I'm, I'm perfect. I'm saved. Yay. Like I yeah. feel great. It wasn't that at all. I mean, it's a process. I'm still, like I said, I'm still trying to get better and better and better and better. And I have bad days. I have bad days. So do you, so does everyone else. And you're lying to yourself if you say you haven't. Um, but it's just like, okay, I know what this is. I know what this is. I got this. It's not a big deal. Look at the bright side. That's why I'm always like positive mindset, positive mindset, positive mindset. And people will be like, oh, do you always talk about positive mindset, but you neg- put your negative, the neg- a little bunch of negative stuff. I'm like, hey guys, this is reality. This is what's happening. This is, this is going on. So, right. you know, you got to take with what it is and, you know, try to find that silver lining. And some of it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's really bad, but, but you also got to fight for the rights and, um, I want to say to party because these yeah, boys just get the up. beastie boys. <laughs> in <your> but, head, yeah. <laughs> but you, like you, you still got the fight continues. Like it's, it's, we are in a war, you know, period. And we will be for the rest of our lives. So well, it's funny. Cause I'll hear a lot of guys will talk about, Oh, Ryan, I'm sure you get this probably even more than I do. Guys will say, Oh, you're fear mongering. I'm like, look, bro, like being positive and wanting to do good in the world doesn't equate to burying your head in the sand. Correct. Like we've we've got to be realistic about the potential threats that we face as a nation, as individuals, things that we do to ourselves. We can't bury our heads in the sand about it just because we want to be positive and happy and everything to be blissfully ignorant, you know? And that's what society does. They put their head, oh, it won't affect me until it does. And then it's too late. They got their mm-hmm. head in the sand. I did a post on that a couple of weeks ago with a bunch of dudes with their heads in the sand. Like they just don't want to deal with it because they're afraid. They're afraid to say anything. They, and what also they don't know what to do, but there's, there's a thing you can do. You can Google something, call somebody, text someone and figure out, Hey, where do where's, where's step one, but they're, right. they're, they don't do it. They're, they're so self-consumed and self-absorbed. It's ridiculous that they just don't care. And then it, something affects them. And they're like, how the hell did this happen? How did this happen? Well, it's because you've been putting it off for the last four years, not opening your damn mouth. Well, I'm just one person, Eddie. I'm just one person. Okay. There is a lot of people and there are books and movies made out of, out of one person. One Open his person. mouth, Martin Luther King, if we want to go there. I mean, just just certain people throughout Jesus history. Christ, like you, you were talking Jesus about Christ, earlier. That, that made a freaking difference uh, by just open the step one, open their mouth. Okay, they got uh, some traction and they're going and they're going and they're going. Like, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. And it's not going to happen overnight. That's the thing. People are we go back to the laziness. They want to live in their little comfort house. Well, so do I. Like, dude, I would love to just shut out everything and just be stay nice. with my family. And people in my family have wanted me to do that. But, but I mean, I just don't like, 
as a man and as a fighter, not, not fighting just to fight, but as a fighter for what I believe to be rights, uh, it's, it's not okay. Like we, we need to open our mouth and do certain things. It reminds me of that, uh, that Ro- I, I can't remember. I think it was a Roman philosopher or somebody who had said something about, you know, just, just give them bread, bread and circuses. Right. And so that's what we're getting from the government and yep. from the media. Let me just, let me entertain you. Oh, oh, oh and, that and over there. No, don't, don't look at that. Close yep. that curtain. Let yep. here eat bread. Have a stimulus check. Yeah. Hey, we love yes. you guys. We love you guys. Here's $600. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about Bye-bye, everything buddy. that we've taken up to yes, this point, but here's $600. My, it, shut up. And, but people, people believe like, oh my God, so, this is so awesome. So awesome. And getting money is awesome, but you're not seeing it for what it is. They're just shutting you up. They're mm-hmm. shutting you up. That's all they're doing. And it's, and it's, it's so sad. And it's like, I love this country more than anything, but I tell you what, right now, it needs a backhand across the face for the people that are up in DC right now. Like, uh, what do you see as being some of either the biggest threats or where you see us progressing unless we start to open up and share and be more realistic about some of these issues that you see? Uh, narrow that question down for me or repeat it, please. So, just so just I don't asking, go off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, no, if, if, if we don't change the trajectory that we're on, I know you have a security company. I, I know you're very aware of, of, of the threats that we might face and being right. prepared. What are some of the threats that we might actually realize if we don't change our trajectory? I think we're going to start losing certain freedoms. I mean, we, we kind of already are. I mean, if you really want to take a step back and look at what we, what's going on right now, and, and, and it was happened before COVID. Um, I mean, you, you need a, you need certain things to go certain places, which is great. It's, it is good for security, which I'm a big security guy. Uh, but like the, the mask, right? Why do I need a mask? To, if if it's like the, the old my body my choice right it's okay for that but not okay yeah. for this oh but you're going to infect other people well if they're wearing a mask or if they're afraid to be then then you stay home you stay home or or is it okay if i see somebody putting a piece of pizza or a juicy burger in their mouth am i allowed to walk up to them slap that out of their hand be like hey i care for your safety i don't want you to die of a heart attack is that is that fair <laughs> no of course, of course not i mean should that be okay I mean, I've, I've had people tell me all the time, you need to wear a mask, you need to wear a mask. And I mean, I put them in their place, they don't do it the next guy, trust me. Um, but then I'll be looking in their shopping cart or what they're buying. I'm like, and you care about safety, you care about health, why don't you, why don't you look in that cart right there? Yeah. Um, and, and I like junk food just like the next guy, don't get me wrong. But um, <laughs> some people's lifestyle is just ridiculous. And the reason why they are pro-mask is because it's easy. It goes back to the lazy, right? It's easy to put on a mask. I'm, I'm, I'm well, it's easy it and it's a virtue thing. Like I, I'm wearing four masks, so I'm a better right. person than you because you're wearing either none or one. So right. I'm better. I'm a better person than you are, Eddie. Right. It's it's ridiculous. And then they just now we're talking about the vaccines, and I'm pretty. I'm almost positive it's going to happen. Where you need a vaccine to travel to this place, this place, or this place. In and I would understand that if we had time to develop a good vaccine, we still don't even know what COVID is. For, if you want to listen to the CDC, it's like a freaking circus. They don't even they don't even know what's going on. It's ridiculous. Right, right. You know, like it took them how many months to say, okay, yeah, now we need a mask. And now that we have mask, masks, don't mask, two masks. The hospitals no are freaking crazy now. So clearly the masks don't work. I mean, it's obvious. Um so yeah, I, I don't know that we got, so I, I think freedoms are going to go away. I think guns are going to be coming up to turn this in with certain people that are in the white house, not elected by the people, by the way, not elected by the people, but put in by the government, which is freaking crap. I mean, the, I don't, I don't know. I'm not trying to go down to conspiracy, but sorry, can sometimes conspiracy is truth of the deep state. Did you see that new uh, times article that came out about, I can't remember the term they used. Uh, it wasn't, I oh, think they yeah, called it yeah. fortif- fortifying Fortified. the election. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes. Man, if that doesn't call into question, that's, I mean, see, I know a lot of people I'm are saying. questioning as it is, but if that doesn't call into question some other things for people who weren't questioning before, I, I don't know what will. Yeah, people, uh, I've heard people say like, there's no way you could coordinate all this throughout the country to do this and that. And I'm like, yeah, you could. You could, you could easily do it because we're only dealing with six states and probably only a couple places where you put all your efforts to, to make what happened, happened. So 
Yeah, it's just it makes it makes no sense. And I mean, if you look at like the impeachment stuff over a year ago, and then that wasn't seem to be working too well, and then COVID kind of sneaks its way in, lock down the world, make it feel like it's Trump's fault, it's Trump's fault, it's Trump's fault. Okay, Trump said take off your damn mask, go back to work a long time ago, and certain states said stay locked down. Mm-hmm. So, but, but people don't know that. They think Trump was keep. They don't know that. They they just don't know. Like they don't know about a lot of things. Why? Because the media says what they want, whoever they're for, which we know who they are. Um, so yeah, I, I dude, freedoms are just gonna get stripped away and they're gonna be very small, 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 small. And I mean, you're seeing it. You know, we can small businesses get shut down, but these Walmarts and Target can stay open forever. Right. Um, if it, if it was that bad, if it was that bad, everything would shut down. It would, it would, everything was shut down, but if it was really that bad, every little cashier and bagger would be dead and our so-called leadership would not be walking around going against the very things that they're putting out, like be in lockdown, stay home, make sure you're always wearing a mask. Do not go get your hair done. Like, can, don't be in big parties. Like, okay, they, they know what's going on. Like, how blind are you? So, yeah, it's very it's blind pretty is the interesting. answer. <laughs> yeah, completely. And look, I, I know we're we're saying, and I've said this too, it's like, how can you not see this? But also there's probably a lot of things that I don't see either that I'm ignorant to because we're so easily right. manipulated and controlled. Like we are so right. easily, well, you talked about earlier, when you see a commercial for a burger or everybody who just watched the Super Bowl yesterday saw the, the millions and millions of dollars they spent on advertising, why would a company spend millions of dollars Literally because millions of dollars <laughs> to get 60 seconds of your time. Cause they know you're going to buy some Doritos. If you listen to them yep. for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're not, it's marketing. It, it, it is all marketing. It, it, I mean, I'm not even a marketer, but come on. Like, how do you, how do you not, how do you not see this? But people believe the news like it's gospel. They don't really get it because they don't, they, they take it to face value. You don't look and see who that author was or who published this and see what other works they do. They people won't do that. They won't dig in to see exactly who this person is. Because yeah, they the, the media screw the media real quick. Is it used to be like they give you facts? They 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 get in the, they weren't all facts. They did their best to give you facts. From what I believe, they report the they data, give you facts, the information. Right, report the data, and it's up to you to form your opinion, how your emotions, feelings react to that, and it's up to you. Now they switch it all around. Like you should be feeling like this because of this, but they, they didn't show you George Floyd, for example. We just saw one clip of video for the longest time. Remember that? And then we saw another clip probably about a month or two after that showed something totally different. So it's just, it's just like that, dude. It's like, they should be held accountable. They should be fined or ripped off the station. But then again, the people that are in power have the money and keep them on there. So it's, it's, it's well, or, 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 and, and I don't, I don't know, they should be ripped off the air necessarily. They, we need to do a better job of seeing things for what they are. So for example, I had a guy, uh, message me the other day on Instagram and he's like, Hey, you were talking about this one thing. And he's like, that's just your opinion. And I said, that's exactly right. That's just my opinion. Thank you. I trust that you can decide based on the information I share, my opinion, my perspective, and my guest opinion, your, your perspective, that you can then take that information and lump it together with the other information. And then you as the individual can make your own decisions. But that's the problem. We as individuals are not making our own decisions. We're looking at no. CNN or Fox or MSN or whatever it is. And we're saying, oh, there, oh, good. Laziness, right? Like we said earlier, they made the decision yep. for me. Trump's bad, Biden's good, BLM's good. Transgenderism is true, you know, is, is objective, you know, science. Good, I don't have to think about it. And then you just wash your hands and go on about your life and continue to bury your head in the sand. It happens all the time. I'll throw up a, an article or just like I'll do a screenshot because um, I like to stay private so I can't put the links up anymore. So I'll just show up the screenshot of the article and say who it's from with the title of the article. And people will be like, oh, where's the source of this? Yeah. Okay. What does it say? <laughs> Type in this into go Google, Google it, and it'll give you a bunch of articles and there you can go. It's like, 
Yeah. I'm working for you. I want to type out. I'm working for you. I have nothing to do today. What, what What do you want to talk about? Let's 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 figure this article out for you. <laughs> like, come on. Not, man. not only am I I'm working for you. Not only that, but I'm doing it for free, just out of the goodness of my yeah, heart. Yeah, that's crazy. I, yeah, so I really want you to have a great opinion and, and know you can just like, dude, do your own research, man. If I get an article, if I see an article, I type it in. I see what other articles, and if I start seeing. New York Times, LA Times, Washington Post. I'm like, okay, let's try to get a little bit deeper here and try to do like off time to figure out what's going on. And, and I shouldn't have to do that. I should not have to do that. But like it should be, and I'm not saying every article they put out is bogus, but um, the opinions or or whatever, the way they word it makes certain people look bad or good. And that's just- Yeah, I, just, I think it just takes a little bit of um, just discernment. You know, you read right. an article and it's just discern. Okay. Who wrote this? Why did they write it? What's their objective? What words are they using? You know, and it's not kids in cages anymore. It's what was the term? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, like children in temporary holding facilities. And then they went from tent cities to holding centers with soft sides or something like just crazy stuff like this. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's getting ridiculous out there. It, it is, buddy. It is. Well, it Eddie, is. I appreciate you, man. I, I know, um, I know what you're doing is good. I even even on things that I don't fully agree with you on, and there are things. Uh, I I value the fact that you're putting it out there and you're putting it out in an in your face way that isn't totally comfortable, and that's actually the point. And I think that's what makes it valuable is that you can challenge your own thoughts. You can challenge your own perspective and your own belief. And I think sometimes it takes, like you were saying earlier, a backhand across the face to say, think about it this way for just a minute. Maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. But just think about it like this for a minute. And I think that rounds out our perspective. So I really appreciate the work you do and the message you put out. You there. as well, buddy. It was a good conversation. Definitely good to talk about uh, real things. So. Definitely. Well, well, um, how do we connect with you? Learn more about what you're doing. Uh, I know the book's going to be coming out. It sounds like maybe this summer. How do we get connected with you? Uh, probably the best one's Instagram, Eddie.Penny on there. That's probably where I post most of it, the biggest following. I usually try to keep Facebook more family orientated, kind of just closer friends. Uh, so don't send requests. <laughs> <laughs> you won't um, answer them if you do. That, that's, prob that's probably it. And then obviously our company, www.contingentgroup.com for any risk mitigation stuff. Um, and we do, and, and, and our Instagram contingent, at, at contingent group is straight up free tips. We give them out all the time. So if you're, you know, you have a daughter or a son in college, or you just need to want to beef up your home security or just get some wisdom, that's a good, great place to get a little tip. We probably put out three or four tips a week, uh, constantly. So it's a good, it's really good. People really enjoy it. <laughs> Right on. We'll sync it all up. All of this stuff is very important, including the the planning and the preparation and everything that you need to do for things when, you know, they will go south. And inevitably, they Absolutely. will. It's just a matter of when and what. So We've just seen it. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks for joining me. Again, when the book comes out, let me know, and uh, we'll get you back on to talk about that, too. All right, my friend. I appreciate it. Thanks, brother. All right, buddy. Be safe.